Thanks. It's also on the wrong screen already. Good start. So, yeah, this is, um, uh, well, you will have noticed I didn't demo during the keynote because I wanted to save the good stuff until now. Um, but still, that's exciting. It is running automatically, probably not what you want in your demo. So, Matrix, we're going to talk here about building uh, bridges between different islands of communication. And you may recall from the keynote that the whole point of Matrix is to defragment all the things like everything on the internet, ideally, but starting with WebRTC and instant messaging and unified communications with a really standard, straightforward HTTP API. Now, the architecture, as it stands today, looks a bit like this. You have a bunch of blue home servers in the middle, which is where your conversations get stored. It's like email, and then you have a server um, for Everybody has a server, and everybody can use different servers, and they go and replicate the conversations between those servers, so there's no single server which ever stores and controls any given conversation. You obviously have clients hanging off those servers, and then you've got the interesting thing, which we're mainly going to talk about today, called application servers or application services, which allow you to go and put arbitrary functionality on top of Matrix. Without them, Matrix is just a messaging system going and sending blobs of JSON around the place. Could be instant messaging, could be WebRTC, could be IoT. But with application services, you can go and um, bridge into other ecosystems. One of these guys can represent an entire world. It could be the world of SIP, the world of XMPP, the world of the PSTM, whatever it might happen to be. You can both masquerade users in the remote ecosystem as well as um, masquerade rooms in that other ecosystem. So you can go and expose Link or whatever it might be into Matrix and use Matrix to glue everything together. So before we jump straight into um, the specifics of that, I want to um, quickly show um, uh, where we're at right now on the client side of things. So if you look at the, um, uh, this plot diagram of Matrix as it stands today, We've got, um, on the left-hand side, all the things in blue come with the matrix.org project, and the stuff in orange is coming from third-party contributions. So we've got three columns here on the top side, which are the three reference clients we provide. iOS, Web, and Android. The one we're going to focus on now is new. It's iOS, and so you can see it's split into three levels here. You've got the console application, which is a white labeled generic kind of mobile application that looks a bit like Slack or Hangouts or something. Then underneath it, you have a matrix kit, which provides reusable UI components, including, as of a few hours ago, Open WebRTC support from Ericsson. They contributed to the WebRTC functionality into matrix kit, so you can go and dump it into any of your applications. And then below that, you have a plain matrix API wrapper called Matrix iOS SDK. So I could talk about all of the boxes here in excruciating detail, I won't. Let's just jump straight into the demo and see what this looks like. So, uh, if I find a mirror, this would work better. Um, let's go. Hang on a sec. Three mirrors. Oh, there you go. That's what's going to see. Go find five folds. <laughs> right. So here is um, the, the good old Matrix web client, which hasn't honestly changed that much in the last six months. And you've got a room here, this is hash iOS and matrix.org, and a bunch of people in it. Um, Rob is the tech architect for OpenWebRTC, and he's my co-founder of matrix.org. There's a bunch of people from Ericsson and um, sort of, uh, Matrix in here, and we've been working on it today, going and messing around, trying to get this done and working, lots and lots of stress as we try to get the thing up and running. Um, Typical things you can do here in Matrix is instant messaging and images and pretty much anything. But what would be really interesting is if we go and take a one to one chat. So this is one with Andy. And I'm going to take her phone, which I'm lifted, and go and project it up using Reflector, which will hopefully work. to mirror everything on, uh, there we go, so that's the phone. You can see here the iOS client looking suspiciously similar to the really ugly white label functional matrix reference client, but it's deliberately white label. Please do not judge us on the prettiness here. The whole point is to show the functionality and encourage you guys to go and skip this and build on it and use the components. And if we look here, I do infinite scrolling back on the page, you can see a bunch of different images. 
HKCD cartoons about messaging standards, all that sort of thing. Now, the two buttons at the top right here are the new WebRTC ones which we added today. So I'm going to hit the video button now, and you can see that um, hopefully here there's an inbound call on Firefox. So this is using H.264, interestingly, and it's, oh, there you go, it might even be working. Come on. You can do it. I think it's doing a protracted ICE negotiation right now. Uh, all the best live drummers are quite working with me. Go and make all the best apps, kill it, <laughs> and relaunch it. Try it again. So basically, this is using the Humber H264 encoder and decoder on the phone. And if I go back into this chat here, try it again. There. Assuming I'm on the right Wi-Fi. So it'll be the schoolboy area that could be going wrong here. If this is an election on the internet. Oh no, there we go. Brilliant. Panic over. So um, you can just about see in the background the, the video coming in. Actually, the video from my laptop to the phone is working much better. You can see a pretty good latency there. As I say, it's all other uh, H264. It's kind of fun using the alternative stack here, that it's the Ericsson stack rather than the Google stack. It's focusing on H.264 and hardware rather than VP8 and so Firefox again using the Cisco H.264 stack. So that's um, where we're at today on the iOS side of things. I can do a message too just to show that that works. Go hello or hello or something and it comes in pretty rapidly between the two. So let me go on to the other demo which is a lot more fun, a little bit more dangerous and even less likely to work. So hold on to your hats and I apologise if this damages anything. Um, going back to the presentation quickly, uh, in fact, I can get rid of the phone for this one. So that was the ecosystem. So matrix bridging. It talks about how you hook up a different ecosystem into matrix, and we do it using these application servers. We thought that a fairly cool example would not be to do the obvious, hey, look at the link going into Matrix, because it's kind of boring. It's a text message there, and a text message there, a video, or a voice call, whatever. We've seen too many of that. So what we've done instead is to go and take this drone here. So this is a parrot bebop, a bebop drone, which is a very cool piece of kit. And it's a classic example of what we're trying to fit with Matrix in some ways. Because it talks H.264. It's got other H.264 running, but there isn't any obvious way to get the um, uh, media off it. It doesn't speak WebRTC, it doesn't speak SIP. You get this low-level C SDK, which um, you can use to control the thing and play with it, but um, that's no good from our perspective. So, so what would happen if we bridged it using the application server into the heart of Matrix? And we've used the Janus WebRTC gateway here to be the bridge between the two. And I can have to open it right now for time. Let's see whether this works. So I'm going to fire up Firefox again. I'm going to change access point onto the drone itself. One second. There we go. And so I've actually got a matrix of running on my laptop now, and then I'll be connected to the internet. And here is the window where I'm talking to the drone. Not a very interesting conversation because drones aren't very smart. But so the first thing I'm going to do is to start a video call. As it happens, we have a support video initiated by the drone, so I have to trigger it by a message like this. And we've only got an inbound call from the drone. Actually, it would help if I start with James, let me start with James. And then try and get the thing to talk to me. You can see the drone just came online as James piled up. This is the coolest demo ever, anyway. This might be the first time that it hasn't been. You can try the download, I guess. That's what I just told some gongers I wanted. Okay, so we can launch the thing over Matrix here. If it understands this much, so it really should understand the idea of starting a video too. We can tell it to come back, back, back. You can see it's not under control. Oh, I've got an inbound video call. You might be alright. Share the sites and devices, come back. Don't sit out the judges. You can see that we have web on the Thank you.
Rock out of the audience. Rock, rock me out. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Boy. Once, once, twice. twice. Thank you. So now we have Mr. Honey Abelmokden from Sonia. There we go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah,